In this video, what we're going to be doing is looking at how you can use a stored procedure to help you write information from SQL Server to a file, say like a text file or whichever kind of file that you want. Um, but before we do that, we're going to be looking at the following things. First of all, the code that you have to write just in T-SQL. Then, if you run into a permissions problem, what you'll have to do to turn permissions on in SQL Server before you can do this. And then finally, why you need to really put this into a stored procedure for your own benefit, and then some examples of that. So just to get started, let's take a look at the code that you need to run in SQL Server. Um, basically what this is doing, we're declaring a few different variables, and then we're setting a parameter that's called file. Now, when you pass a file into this code, it doesn't want just the name of the file, but it wants the file with its entire path you know, all the way from, say, like the root or however, wherever it is on the operating system, uh, this code needs to know the whole path and then the file name. Now, here's what happens. If the file does not exist, it will create it. If the file's already there, it will just depend to what, it, what is already there. But this code will not create a directory that isn't there. And in addition, it will not let you write to that directory if SQL Server does not have permissions or the person, the account running in SQL Server does not have permissions on that directory. But those kinds of things are beyond the scope of this. So basically all we're really doing here is we have the entire path and file name, we have the text that we're going to be writing this one time, and then you notice we're using all this built-in stored procedure stuff. There's something called OA create. OA method that gets called a couple of times, then OA destroy. Basically, we're creating a scripting file system object, um, and then we're doing open text file. This is basically, and it returns a file ID. This is like in any, like in VV6 when you would run free file to get a file number, as opposed to just using the number one. Just gives you a file number for the operating system. Uh, and then here, this is when it actually writes the line to the file. Here's the piece of text that you're writing. And then, just to be on the safe side, you destroy this stuff. This is basically doing your garbage collection. So it's really simple. But let's run this. And, you know, as you look at this, just to write this one line to this one file, these are all the things that you have to do. And that seems like an awful lot of work just for that. But let's run it. And if you notice, SQL Server just choked. And it's giving us all this stuff that, you know, you can't do it and blah, blah, blah. The reason why is because permissions are turned off. When you use SQL Server, out of the box, these permissions are turned off, and you have to turn them on. You also have to be uh, an administrator, or it won't let you do that. But basically, um, in order to figure out what code you have to run to turn that on, you could take any one of these errors and put it right into Google, and every page that comes up will have this code on it. But just do yourself a favor, save it to a file so that you can open it up in SQL Server. You have to do all this stuff but basically the most important thing here, see that one under SP Configure OLE Automation Procedures? It has to be set to one or true. And when we run this, it's not a big deal. It just says, yeah, this, this, this. We set it from this to this, and this was that, and we set it from zero to one. Have a nice day. And then you're finished. That's all you have to do for that, but you have to be an administrator. But now when we run this, oh, and by the way, let me show you the directory here. This directory, if you notice, See users, mertman, documents, acme, log files, log text. That's where we are here. See users, mertman, document, uh, acme, log. There's nothing in here. But now that I turned on permissions, I'm going to run this and look, no error. And look what it did. It wrote this file, log.txt. See? Log.txt. Log.txt. And we open it up and it says, hello, Jerry. And come on, you wanted to say that. All right, let me close that. Now, if I run this again and again, run it another time and another time, all it keeps doing is appending to that file. That's all it does. But doesn't it seem like that's a lot of work just to write a line? Instead, what you should do is write a stored procedure. And actually, let me open up my stored procedure that I have for this. Uh, write to file, modify. Basically, in this stored procedure, all I did is I took all the same code See the code that's here? I basically took all that same code and I just dumped it into the body of a stored procedure with the exception of the file, whoops, the file parameter and the text parameter here have to be passed into the stored procedure. So they come up here, file and it's a Veracare 2000, just 
use 2,000 or more. You'll never be upset if you do that. Text, if you're writing more to that than that, you probably want to do something different. But basically, the stored procedure is called write to file. I have it in a different database than Acme. So these two things have to be passed in so it knows what it's writing and what file to write it to. But all this other stuff in the body, see, is all this stuff that we'd have to write out every single time, pretty much. So because it's in a stored procedure, the only thing we have to tell this every time we want to write something is what file and what we're writing. So here's what that would look like. All you would have to do is do an exec statement on the stored procedure, or if it's the only line on here, you don't even need the word exec. But anyway, you could just write the name of the stored procedure with its database name if you're in a different database, and then just pass in the first parameter, which is the file and path, and the second one, which is what are we writing. Now, before we run that, let me just ask you, would you rather write just this code or all this code every time? Just this or all this? Well, because it's in a stored procedure, like this, one time, then when you want to write something to a file, just write this one line of code. It's a lot cleaner, and watch. We'll run it once, we'll run it twice. Let's open this up. All these hello Jerry's, and then we just wrote this hello Newman. Come on, you know you wanted to say that. So having a stored procedure that does the writing to the actual file for you, do, handling all this heavy lifting, is really nice, because then when you need to use this, you just use it. Let me close a few of these windows so I can kind of move on here and know what I'm looking at. So now let me just look at one other thing. In something like this, you probably would want to break this out. If you're like me, if you're a little bit, you know, OCD, you probably want to just write this out so it's easy to read. Like I have a file parameter and I have a text parameter. And then this way I write the file one time, unless it's changing, but it's probably not, you know. And then what I'm writing this one time. And when I do this, you know, it basically does the same thing as this, but at least it's a little more readable. You know, it depends what you're doing and how big your information is. Um, let me just delete this. We're going to do something a little different now. Let me just show you a real world example, though, of why it behooves you to maybe, you know, think in terms of writing a little bit more like this. This is an example of an actual, let's say you're running a, a job in SQL Server, it runs every night at 2 in the morning, and this isn't even the code that's running the job. This is just code that could be sprinkled inside of the job. Um, but what you're doing is you have your file parameter, which you're going to set one time, and then your text parameter, which is going to change every time. And maybe at the top, every time this runs once a day, maybe what you're going to do is just write a blank line, you know, so you can kind of see what you're doing, and maybe write, you know, a couple of lines of asterisks to just kind of break things up. But then, Every time you need to write something, maybe you're going to say, starting this job, X, Y, Z, blah, 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 at, and then I'm get, I have my own function that formats a date and time for me the way I like, you know, and then I write it to the file, and then later on I do some processing, blah, 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 and I tell it when it happens, and all this junk. And you see, you can have all this code kind of sprinkled throughout some other kind of processing that you're doing that happens late at night. This way, if something crashes halfway through, you can kind of see from the log files sort of what's going on. So let's just run this. Bam. And then let's go to our directory. And notice we called this particular file um, job log instead of just job or log. So we open this up. And now you can see just from running in that one window, it did all of this. The times are all the same because there wasn't really any processing in between. But let's just run this a couple of times. And see, even though I have the file open, nothing crashed. It doesn't really care. It's really easy going. You can kind of imagine now, if this was some monster log file, um, let me just make that a little smaller. If this was some monster log file you know, that you're writing stuff to every day, you can kind of see like the clean breaks, you know, like this This is one day, you can see everything that happened, and this is the next day, and you can see everything that happened, and you know, here's the final day, and you can see everything that happened. So, it, basically, but what's nice about this, and we'll close that now, is that Every time you have to write to the file, you're just doing one line of code. You know, you're telling it what the text that you're going to write to, it probably changes every time. But when you do the actual write, you're just doing this. You're just saying this right here, as opposed to, oh, I might have closed it already. Well, as opposed to all the stuff with the SPOA create and SPOA destroy and SPOA method. You don't have to have all that stuff every single time. It's just like calling your own procedure which it is, you're calling your own procedure. 
So anytime you need to write something, just make your own stored procedure, write to file, pass in the file, pass in the text, and you're good to go, and you'll be really happy.